Today's episode is sponsored by Golgotha, a historical murder mystery set in the First World War trenches and based around true events. When the rumour of a murdered soldier that had been found crucified in no man's land sweeps the Allied trenches, this threatens an army-wide rebellion. One soldier from each nation's army is pulled from the ranks to join a team to investigate the crime, and what they discover will change the course of the war. So today we're at the Illinois State Museum, which shocked the pants off me. Let's have a walk. This is one of the best set up museums I've seen in a very, very long time. Now we're not going to spend too much time because there's a lot to see here. We'll have a quick look around this beginning. All right, so let's get into the actual fossils. So obviously there's a lot of marine fossils from time found around this area. They concentrate that on it a lot. And again, we don't want to waste too much time here because we want to get to the good stuff. Like many museums, always an issue with reflections. A great game where you actually go through time as different sharks eating different fish from different times. Not bad. Press the joystick button to see the next generation of fish. I am a terrible shark. you were hungry. You'll need to eat more fish to change the population. Press the joystick button to continue eating. A snarky evolution game. This is awesome. Very clever. And above us we have a giant Dunkleosteus. Ooh, light. There we go. Giant jellyfish. But check this out. Next gallery. The Carboniferous. How amazing is this? The giant centipedes and stuff. And so you're so oogling and goggling over this that you've got to make sure you turn around. Or else you miss. Giant trees, or ferns, actually, moss. And then a lot of the local fossils Obviously, coal is a big industry around these areas. How this stuff was laid down. A bit about the fossils. And then you actually go into a cave. A mine, I should say. So we're going into the mine. There's a seam of coal. It's a bit hard to see. Reflections again. Yes, there's lots of coal in there. How some of these minerals are made. And what I really found great is this museum. It's a state museum. There weren't a lot of dinosaurs found here, if any. So they've actually made a point that they don't really have any. But what they do have is Ice Age stuff. So you walk through the Ice Age glacier where water has been tunneling a hole and you come out to the ice age savannah a musk ox being hunted by a short faced bear fantastic stuff and you've got a short faced skull I'll take a step back so you get a bit of look, bit of look at this look at that there's a glacier. Right. So now we have some of the things that are found in the area. Sloths and mammoths and things. Great looking display. And associated with it are all the actual fossils. You can see a lot of these fossils. Jaws and skulls. What are the leg bones and jaws from these animals? But we're not done. So we move on. Now we come into a 
more local time. And here we have parakeets and all of the local birds. And look at this. I'll stop here. Give you an idea of the ecosystem. Otters and fish swimming along, lots of fish hiding, fish attacking, some mollusks, turtles. Gotta keep an eye out, there's things hidden in the grass, coming over, little mice and things, beaver. And then check this out. Hidden in amongst the weeds and everything, and these snapping turtles and fish. how a mollusk gets through. In Australia we call those pippies. And we're moving along. How the dog was formed. Then we come into this amazing area. Talking about local ecosystems. Beautiful backdrops on those. And there's a cave. We're going to the cave. How a lot of these cave systems were formed and how, how a lot of fossils came out of these caves. There's some bones come around, another section to the cave. Talking about the local wildlife and how the local caves were formed. Colony of bats up there. In fact, there's some scripting on bats just here. But we're not done. Moving on. Passing this giant tree. Look at that. Fantastic. Move along. Almost to the end. It's a bit of a famous image. I'm not sure if it was originally from here. Maybe it was. And then basically we end here with the bison. Well that's just a fantastic display. And this is just the natural history side of it. There's more galleries and I'm going to head off for there now. So I've just been through my records and for some reason I don't have a video of the rest of the museum. I don't recall if I videoed it or if I just never did, but I did take photos. So, so I've strung a sequence of photos here to show you what the rest of the museum's like. It's not going to take very long. Uh, the rest of the museum, we are talking about the Illinois State Museum. So Chicago being the biggest city is not the state capital. Springfield is, and obviously, and so the most famous Illinoisan is of course Abraham Lincoln. So there's a lot about Abraham Lincoln and his presidency. Not too much though, because you'd see that at the Abraham Lincoln Library. It's more about the growth of Illinois and the people moving into Illinois, the settlers, how they built their houses. There is still some paleontology up here and it's important to see. And a lot of it is a lot more personalized. For example, here we have a mastodon. This mastodon was found when they were building one of the state's prisons and they were actually building the bricks out of the mud in the prison. And as the prisoners were forging these bricks out of this mud, they started to unearth a mastodon. And these are the actual fossils from that mastodon. So it's a far more personalized fossil than just a normal bones on a wall. Now it's a lot about some of the animals there. Of course, we've got the snapping turtle. I'd like to say that this snapping turtle was famous for biting Abraham Lincoln. I don't think that's true, but I'm making it up, so it's true now. A lot of the botanical and scientific explorations, a lot of the, the artwork, and most importantly, Illinois' part in the First World War. And that's got a lot to do with Australia. And actually, I have a video coming up. I go to the Illinois First World War Museum, and it's all about Chicago and the Australians fighting in the Western Front. It's really good. Now there's also a large section about the indigenous of the area. Lots of dioramas of how they live, their lifestyles, their clothing. Bizarrely, because it's a, a state museum, it's also about the collectors and the people who actually built the collection. And there's quite a bit about personalized collections of the people who are running the museum or were famous collectors in the state. And that kind of ends with 
And you'll see this in a lot of museums you go to that they've created artworks out of all the fossils they've found. And just going back to the beginning, something that I didn't get to show you was this area is known for its prehistoric sharks and there's a great prehistoric shark display showing some of the very early forms of prehistoric sharks and here you can see some of the images here. So Illinois State Museum, really great and I hope you get to get there one day. I was so pleased to get there, I was quite amazed at what I saw. And if you've liked the stories and you've stuck in this long, maybe you might want to buy one of my books and Horror, the 1950s International War on Comic Books. It's actually an amazing read and I think you'll quite enjoy it. Lots of amazing history, things about JFK, dealing with comics, it's all true. And the Australian serial killer, which was also Australia's number one comic book artist. So check out Horror, all the links are below. And I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you listen in on another video very shortly.